talking about calibrating tumor growth and mutation parameters with respect to both spatial and algorithmic behavior by other scientists. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Stefano Bozetto. I work in other scientists at the Moffitt Cancer Center, and I'm going to show you some results of uh, analysis in monohistos chemistry slides. Uh, first of all, some, uh, let's say, motivational slides. So in uh, 1975, before we, most of us were born, uh, when in 11 women who were diagnosed with breast cancer. And uh, nowadays, uh, despite a growing rate of five years, rate survival of 90. 5% plus, still one in eight women and one in 1,000 men are diagnosed with breast cancer. So it's, uh, I know that the, I'm probably the last obstacle from your path to the outside <laughs> lunch, but uh, just to translate this number uh, in, uh, there's are only US figure, but if you think at general worldwide numbers, by the end of my talk, 65 people will be diagnosed by breast cancer. By the end of my talk, 19 people will be dead because of breast cancer. So try to think that we are here for not just how cool we are, but uh, to remember that we are trying our best to solve this problem. And uh, so motivational uh, slide, I'll surely, oh, wait. Um, from my side, uh, the investigation, how this, uh, the nature of this uh, disease changed the uh, structural and the morphological uh, evolutions of the, of the breast. Here in this slide, you have a normal breast architecture after uh, on the top right uh, with the presence of a carcinoma in C2 when become invasive, you see the bottom right until when become metastatic. So clearly looking at these uh, images, uh, my idea was trying to understand how can we characterize uh, the morphological evolutions of this cellular architecture, how to relate it uh, with uh, the uh, disease degree, and how these theoretical informations that we can uh, use to connect the anatomy of this uh, uh, pathology with this phys physiology. And uh, also because I work in a uh, most cancer center is uh, actually one of the top 10 cancer hospitals in, uh, in the United States. Of course, I want to try to see how my theoretical knowledge uh, uh, can be integrated in the decision making process today, now, tomorrow, not in uh, 10 years, okay? So I've been uh, provided with this uh, database. So if I just do study of early stage breast cancer, so adaptive, adaptive, uh, radiations, nine and a half grade, three, fra uh, three uh, um, fractions, uh, staying with the immuno is to, uh, fluid. So basically uh, inform my on the position locations of uh, immuno cells, uh, most important uh, uh, elements, B cell, natural killers, uh, B cell, and all the markers, B3, B4, and POTS B3, et cetera. I've been informed, uh, giving me the information for pre and post treatment uh, with these uh, slabs uh, that as uh, an example of a section area uh, where I can identify a region of interest as a tumor uh, interface region tumor, between tumor, stroma, and stroma areas, okay? So that's what they look like. <laughs> There's no the, the table here. I don't know why it doesn't appear. So, um, so I apologize, there's no table. <laughs> there's a piece of table over there. So anyway, uh, I try to focus myself only uh, between this uh, uh, set of patients, only with the patient for which I have both pre and post. Uh, and I will show you the results uh, on uh, six uh, uh, of them uh, to start. Uh, what I decide to use, which tools can I, we use to code this, uh, this distribution of cells in an information that we can read? How can I get, can I, can I extract information from, when, from this uh, cell distribution when you, when you give to me? Well, uh, one of the tools that I loved for this project was the two-point correlation function that basically tells you how many stars are around another one, okay? So if we are completely distributed randomly in this room, we maximize the entropy, there's a, a the two-point correlation functions is basically a line around zero. If we are more clustered than random, we are above it. Under uh, clustering, we are below one. It's, it's not really a correlation, as you see mathematically, is uh, between minus one to implies infinity, so it's not upper bounded. In particular, a useful tool, nevertheless, that I'm going to show you 
today are works with the, its Fourier transform. It's called power spectrum. It's basically informing you on how much energy the cells are using and uh, having in their normal cycle per unit of space, okay? What you see in the bottom is a wave number, something proportional to the frequency inversion and proportional to the dimensions that are using. So power spectrum is a powerful tool to understand uh, the evolution of the cells uh, across many different uh, size, uh, size of the cell. I'm considering between four and 40 micrometers, okay? Uh, how, well, yes, of course, there are also, uh, you see the slides are not infinite. They are some, uh, uh, limited and uh, for the reason that I'm going to show you, I'm interested to see what's the difference between this clustering compared to a completely random in an infinite set. So I'm using topolo uh, uh, torus topology, a fancy name, nothing scary. That means that I'm basically repeating infinitely this, the, the slabs that I have, the region of interest along the directions. Um, and how do we interpret it? Well, the energy that, 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 that with which this, these cells will evolve actually will depend on the ability of them to move, so something proportional to an evolution of time. And, uh, and if I assume this um, torus topology, I will assume that basically I'm interested in the difference between a completely random evolution. So the chemical potentials that move them is proportional to, uh, with a factor, the diffusion factor that is a scalar function for me on uh, their ability to grow will can be accounted for uh, with, with many different uh, general law because I'm interested in not a set of cancers. I will consider just an exponential growth. So the interesting results, this is a tough math, but somehow you have eventually worked it out and you discover these interesting results you see here below. This is a power spectrum of the reaction diffusion equation. As you see on the left, the contributions of its shape is uh, only for small wave number, the, if I vary the growing factor, and is uh, only from different diffusion coefficients if I look at the large wave number. So what does it mean? That the, I've, been give, I've been given a completely disentangled system between uh, reaction and infusion coefficients, if I am able to fit, and if it looks like the observed one. For free, I didn't know in advance, I had to show this equation. Does it look like with the same power spectrum that I find from the observation from the slab? Yes, the answer is yes. Here you see pre and post immunohistochemistry analysis of power spectrum in blue and red uh, respectively, or which are so. And uh, the line that you see passing to it, it is uh, the react this power spectrum from the reaction diffuser. So from a single slab, I can evolve the tumors. And I don't need to evolve from a single shot. Note that either you are right or you are wrong because the diffusion at the way high wave numbers, change can be shifted, but the slope cannot be touched. So if you are right, as you see here, I fit it, you get the correct theory. Otherwise, <laughs> the theory is wrong and you see it immediately, okay? So how does, how does it help me to inform uh, my, my oncologist coming out uh, uh, to ask me some information? Well, you can imagine that if I have a patient and I take the resection chart and I do my analysis of it, if I find that there is a high diffusion value, then I can imagine, well, you know, this cancer is very much spreading. I may want to attack it with a, like a systemic therapy, like a chemotherapy, which means if I have a, a very strong uh, high the uh, growing factor, while well, this cancer is in the breast, it's growing like a balloon, better to attack, for example, with high uh, radiotherapy, okay? How does it take to go from this uh, to true applicable results? Well, in a single word, it takes money, <laughs> okay? So the, you have, of course, to extend the database. You have to use statistics to the database. This is a, uh, the, an, an extended database that I'm using, uh, as you see here in black is the cancer on uh, different colors, the different markers, so T3, C3, C4, C8, etc. And the reason is why? Well, because I can do something like that. So I can have a probability distribution functions of the distributions of, uh, for example, the diffusion coefficients. If somebody enters from that door in the hospital ask, and I do my analysis and I get that the, the diffusion coefficient is minus six, 0.5, well, then it's poorly diffusive. 
but it is uh, minus five, well, that's to be considered very diffusive. So I can suggest the oncologist today that is better if it attacks, you know, with some systemic value. The same can be done with a growing, a growing factor. Of course, it's not published, so let's discover and propose. What is also most interesting, what gas can me, come to me for free? Well, of course, you are, uh, you know, that uh, tumor tumor infantry pills, the lymphocytes, uh, are for some time of time, tumors, for some time of cancer, informative of the prognostic, uh, let's say, of the evolution of the cancer. So in, the, in this first uh, this slide that I showed you before, I can ask myself, uh, not what's the correlation between the power spectrum, what's the two-point correlation function, but what is the two-point cross correlation function? So if you are here distributed, I can ask myself, how is enhanced the probability if uh, there's a man there that there are more female around? How much is increased the probability that if there are uh, cancer around there, there is a CD3, CD4, CD8, they're around, okay? So I, the, another follow-up uh, work that I'm going to, to work is exactly on the cross spectrum. So to uh, try to understand, to quantify the reason why there is the tumor infertility that steals in this uh, um, uh, analysis. So, of course, final, uh, final uh, point is, uh, well, I wanna in eventually introduce these things in a uh, two more, uh, let's say, in a ma decision-making framework where I, I, I've been uh, developing much long in the past. And uh, yes, to, to inform our clinicians uh, actively on what eventually they can, uh, which, which say, uh, which, which therapy is probably to be most effective, probably, okay? That's all I thanks uh, Dr. Mandarin and Dr. Gettenberg for uh, supporting this, that past three year, years and a half, uh, and I'm also on the market, so if you're interested to support uh, this research further, please uh, follow me and contact me uh, during lunch. <laughs> Thank you.